So recall that the angle theta between two vectors, u and v, in Rn, is such that the cosine of that angle is the dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of each of them. Or we can isolate theta. The angle is equal to the cosine inverse of the ratio. And this is valid for between negative 1 and 1, since these are the restrictions of cosine of theta. So the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality says if two vectors u and v in an inner product space, then the inner product of the two vectors is less than or equal to the product of the magnitude of each. If you can see up here, you have the components of each. If you look up at our angle between the two vectors, we can see this is true also. It can be the inner product. So we're going to find the angle between sine of x and cosine of x on 0 pi. So we're going to use the above angle formula using the inner product. Let's go ahead and find the top first. This will be defined from 0 to pi. Don't forget to put in... When you put in both your limits of integration, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0, so this is going to be 0. Now, I don't need to find the bottom two because the whole ratio will be 0 now. So this brings us to our next definition. Two vectors in an inner product space are orthogonal if the inner product is zero. So that means, you can see here, we did get the inner product was zero. So the angle between sine of x and cosine of x is orthogonal. So in R2, let me draw the picture here. If we have two vectors, u and v, we do head to tail. The resultant is u plus v. And basically, you can see it makes, we only have the squares equaling each other if you have a right triangle there. So basically, this is only true if it's, if u and v are perpendicular or orthogonal. So extending that theorem to include other vector spaces, not just R2, so we've written it as the inner product, not the dot product, we have the same conclusion. And here's a quick proof. I want to prove this is true but we're going to be able to use that the inner product is zero to show it. So I'm going to actually start on the right-hand side. Whoops. U plus V squared is the inner product of U plus V, U plus V. And then to use a few of the properties we've learned, let's go ahead and preserve this and split up U plus V. Okay, so we've split this one up, kept this. Now we do it one more time. We split this one up, keep this, split this one up, keep that. So, again, we're trying to prove this then. We're trying to prove that these are equal. So I'm, I'm starting on the right-hand side. I need to prove that it's equal to this. But we're allowed to use the inner product as zero. So here's the inner product, and that's zero. And this is the inner product, that's zero also, because they are commutative inside. 
And then the definition of this is just the magnitude of u squared plus this is the magnitude squared. Done. So just to write out what we want to show, we want to show the Pythagorean identity theorem is true for the two functions sine of x and g of x. So I wrote it out, the, cosines, the magnitude of cosine x squared plus the magnitude of sine of x squared equals the sum of them, the magnitude of the sum of them squared. So we just got to show each of these and show that they're equal. So let's start with well, that's cosine of x. And I'm going to add, this was part of the problem I forgot to write. So it has to be on an interval, always on an interval. So this is from minus pi to pi. Got to use the power reducing formula. But since this is even and this is even, we can double it and go from zero to pi. Goes a little faster. I'm doubling it again because it's an even function. And we'll get the same thing. Okay, we have all the pieces. So the right hand side is two pi. And each of these were pi. Yep, two pi equals two pi. We verified it. That's it for today.